Now let's talk about a make or buy decision. In this example, we'll be talking about Thrasher Company, which has purchased 10,000 pumps annually from Nordique Incorporated. Because the price keeps increasing and reached $68 per unit last year, Thrasher's management has asked for an estimate of the cost of manufacturing the pump in its own facilities, as opposed to buying it from Nordique. The engineering, manufacturing, and accounting departments have prepared a report for management that includes the estimate for an assembly run of 10,000 pumps to replace those that we currently purchase. Additional production employees would be hired to manufacture the pumps, but no additional equipment, space, or supervision would be needed. So according to the report, the total cost for 10,000 units is estimated to be $957,000, or $95.70 per unit for each of those 10,000 units. The current purchase price is $68 a unit. So ultimately, the report recommends continued purchase of the product. The information at the heart of the report contained the following. The components amounted to $120,000 worth of costs. The assembly labor amounted to $300,000. And per the available information, assembly labor consists of hourly production workers. The third line reports manufacturing overhead. That amount is $450,000. Now, manufacturing overhead is applied or estimated for products on a direct labor dollar basis. That means that for every direct labor dollar spent for a product, a certain amount of variable overhead is tacked on. The variable overhead add-on is 50% of each direct labor dollar. So if we spend a dollar of direct labor on a product, we incur 50 cents worth of variable overhead and fixed overhead is added to the product at a rate of 100%. That is dollar for dollar. For each direct labor dollar spent, we incur a dollar of fixed overhead. The general and administrative overhead is basically calculated as 10% of other costs. What that means is whatever costs the product are incurring, 10% of that amount is added on as a general and administrative overhead estimation. So the $120,000 for components, $300,000 for labor, and $450,000 for manufacturing overhead amounts to $870,000. 10% of that is tacked on in the form of general and administrative overhead. Combine these four line items amount to $957,000 and divvied up over the 10,000 units that is generated by these costs comes out to be the $95.70 per unit. Now, let's take a look at the decision to continue to buy these products for $68 as opposed to making them ourselves for what is projected to be $95.70 each. Now, a lot of accounting is going on in that in the available information. So the true question would be, what are the actual costs that would be incurred in order to make this product ourselves? Now, the line items started with components. Components would be the materials at the heart of these pumps. And so in the sense that each pump requires certain components, this information is relevant to this decision. The reason is, is if we don't make the pumps, we don't incur the components costs. If we do, we do incur these costs. The costs are different between the different alternatives, so therefore it's relevant. That the $120,000 in components costs would be relevant. The labor, we were told, amounts to $300,000. That $300,000 is relevant because we were told that if we were to make the pump pumps ourselves, we would have to hire additional production employees. If we don't make them, we don't incur this cost. So again, this $300,000 is relevant to our decision. Now how about overhead? How much is relevant for our decision going, going forward? 
Well, we were told that we wouldn't require additional supervision or any additional facilities. So we're perhaps going to treat variable overhead and fixed overhead differently. Let's look at how this $450,000 in overhead was calculated. 50% of the amount of money spent on direct labor represents the variable overhead because we applied overhead of the variable type at a 50% rate of direct labor dollars. And then 100% is applied for fixed overhead. So that's an additional 300000 based on a dollar-for-dollar dollar match of the direct labor dollars spent. Now the fixed overhead is likely irrelevant. The reason is we didn't receive information about having to expand facilities. In fact, we received information suggesting that we don't need to. So I would argue that the $300,000 in fixed overhead is irrelevant. And it's questionable whether or not the variable overhead is relevant. I'll give it the benefit of the doubt and include it. In terms of the general and administrative overhead, that's a pure cost allocation amount. There's no consideration of actual cost in that number is at all. It's just an additional 10% overhead charge likely coming from corporate headquarters. And because we don't have information that suggests that we need more corporate employees, that $87,000 tack on is probably just an allocation of an existing pool. It's not a true actual cost that would be incurred if we were to make the pumps ourselves. So I'm not going to have any representation of that general and administrative overhead in this example. So combining what I believe to be the relevant information in this example, the components, the labor, and with some question, the variable overhead portion, the total actual cost incurred is $570,000. If I divide that by the 10,000 units that we produce with these costs, I get $57 per unit of actual incremental cost that we would incur to make this product ourselves. Compare that to what we're paying and you can see from a financial perspective that the re recommendation of the report to continue to buy is actually costing us money. Now as you can see, a lot of times you need to make certain assumptions about information that's provided to you for you to ultimately make a decision. And in the real world you can collect additional information that will help facilitate the decision. But you're always lacking something. And the key here is to focus on that which is relevant to the ultimate decision.